So uh, Young Indigenous Australia, as Xavier said, is a special interest group um, uh, within Engineers Australia. Um, we've got a division in each state. So I'm a member of the Young Engineers Australia Victoria division. Um, and previously we would have our events, you know, uh, focused on, on, on Victoria and we'd have um, in-person events for Victorians. But one of the cool things that came out of actually um, uh, and, and the way that we've adapted with EA to, to this year to, to moving everything online, um, uh, we've actually come up with a national calendar now and we're hosting events that are cross, um, uh, you know, uh, advertised and cross um, uh, delivered across the entire, the entire country. So now we're just delivering for Engineers Australia as a, as a, as a whole rather than just by state. Um, so that was actually a pretty cool um, outcome of, of moving everything online. Anyways, so um, uh, Young Engineers Australia. So here it says new look, new name. Basically, we've we've recently also merged with with an EA um, uh, function. So it used to there used to be Frontiers uh, as a function in EA, and we're now merging to deliver better and bigger events for um, uh, young engineers um, with the help of EA uh, Engineers Australia resources as well, um, which is also pretty cool. So that's been a big transition that's happening this year. So our committee specifically and YEA as a whole, um, what we aim to deliver is CPD events for young engineers, young engineers ranging from um, current university students, um, recent graduates and early career professionals. Um, and uh, uh, we aim to our, our events, are, are, we aim to do it for all engineers. We try not to make it um, field specific. Um, it just, it's just it's events that benefit you along your journey as a, as a, as a young engineer from dealing with, you know, tough ethical um, problems at work to um, uh, emotional intelligence to communication skills. Um, one of our, our big events that we, we, we love having every year is outside engineering, where we look at things that like financial acumen and, 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 and other skills like that. Um, so, yeah, so these are the kinds of events that we do. Um, and these range across different, um, uh, I guess, like networking sessions, um, social events. Um, the main thing that we deliver is CPD events as well. So those also count towards EA's um, CPD. Um, we uh, mentoring sessions. Um, so that's a cool outcome that's coming out of our merge with um, EA's function is that we're now going to start a mentoring platform. Um, uh, there's technical presentations, workshop, and so on. Um, we haven't been able to do site tours uh, this year, but um, site tours is usually one of the things that we do as well. And um, actually, one, one another really big event that we did this year that was really cool was um, uh, uh, the first uh, YEA um, case competition. So um, that was a really cool thing that we did where we partnered with, I think it was the city of Melbourne um, for a project on um, that's related to uh, Queen Victoria Market, an upgrade to Queen Victoria Market. So that was really cool. We had a massive turnout, um, uh, over a hundred teams signed up and it was a great experience just seeing it happen and seeing it unfold. And, um, you know, Xavier was a, was, was a part of the, the, the planning for that as well. And the team that did this was a great effort. So what you can see in front of you here is the 2020 Young Engineers um, Victoria Committee. Um, uh, as Xavier mentioned, um, the committees are usually eight to 12 members. We are on the higher side of, of, of members on our committee. So we've got 12 members in, in total. Um, all of them, great people that, you know, it's, it's great to work alongside, um, you know, like-minded people like them. And um, so, Actually, we have, if, you, um, if you're interested in joining the committee, if anyone would, would like to join our, our Young Engineers Committee, um, we have our nominations, our elections coming up. Um, there's a link on our Facebook page, Young Engineers Australia Victoria Division um, on Facebook. There's a link to our nominations um, uh, link and it closes this Saturday, which is the um, 15th. 14th. I believe. 14th. 14th, sorry, yes. Um, so this Saturday, the 14th of November. So that's when the, the, the nominations close. So if anyone's interested, jump on. And then our next event is also coming up on the 19th of November, um, which is next Thursday. 
um, how to foster productivity beyond work as an engineer, as a young engineer. So like I mentioned, we do things that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a career as a, we're going to have someone talks about emotional intelligence and um, influencing um, people in the workplace and uh, et cetera. It's like a great event that's coming. So I think that's, that's all for me. Thank, Thank you, you, Xavier. Thanks so much. Um, yes, as you mentioned, um, there is still time to you want to become a committee member of the Young Engineers Australia, Victoria. Uh, Victoria. It's primarily that the committee is primarily constituted of early career uh, engineers, um, but we do these these committees cater for um, engineers student engineers, graduate engineers, uh, experienced engineers from 18 to 35 years old. So in the committees, um, students are very important as well. We're looking for a proportion of, I don't know, maybe three, uh, three to four students um, in the committee. Uh, nominate yourself. Um, I'll talk to you a bit about social media, uh, Facebook groups. You can see those announcements and the links in the, in the Facebook group. Um, I would like to just quickly conclude on some of the additional resources that we have specifically for student and graduates. So um, jobs, uh, our jobs board, uh, definitely browse through jobs.engineersaustralia.org.au. There you can browse through employers, um, look for internships, vacation placements, uh, graduate programs, graduate positions. We have over 200 companies that are advertising uh, all year round. So don't always keep an eye out, uh, open and see where there, are, where there are opportunities there. We have a great careers advice tab as well on the jobs board, um, over 170 articles on you know, how to uh, prepare, plan your career, um, advice on how to ace interviews, um, specific interviews of, of some um, employers, hiring companies, um, how to successfully apply for a company like, I don't know, um, Pfizer, let's say. I don't know if there's an article on Pfizer, but um, that would be an example. So jobs.engineersaustrade.org.au, a definite uh, resource there for you. Uh, there you will also see our um, upcoming information on some of our career fairs. So every year in March, we have a career fair elevation. Uh, because of the current situation, um, this has gone to virtual uh, platforms, uh, individual booths, but we uh, presenting their graduate programs, their internship opportunities. Um, and it's a great way for you to start building those professional networks. Um, hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to go live again um, every year. Usually it's, it's a live career fair in March, uh, but yeah, keep your eyes um, uh, on this space and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have some updates for you very soon. That was the career, yeah, those are the articles I mentioned to you, career advice, really great resource. Um, so in conclusion, um, not wanting to take, take too much time, um, just to conclude on why it's important for you to be a member and not only a member, a student member, but an engaged member, some, somebody who really actively um, contributes, um, seeks advice, um, shares knowledge, etc. So by being a member of Engineers Australia, you're part of a 100,000 plus strong uh, membership uh, community. You can connect um, at, a, uh, at a local and a global level. You can expand your professional and personal networks. Um, obviously build your knowledge, your skills, and all sorts of experience that are required uh, for you to be uh, successful in your career. Those uh, engineering resources I mentioned to you, there's some of the best resources anywhere in the world, non-Google uh, searchable uh, databases. Um, and finally, you do gain credibility, uh, immediate credibility by association, uh, by being a member. When you're a member, you gain a post-nominal student, stud IOS, that means student member of the Institution of Engineers Australia. That's why you're a student. Then when you transition to graduate, it's no longer free, but um, you gain also that post-nominal grad IOS, graduate member of the Institution of Engineers Australia. And then there are several more post-nominals uh, as you progress in your career. MIOS is a full member, a professional with more than three years experience. That's an MIOS. Then you have things like CPN or CNHT, CNJ. Those are chartered engineers and professional technologists associate. Um, fellow, that's when you've had more than 20 years of membership. You can be also a Eng exec, engineering executive. So really, uh, the first number one step at the first level, student member. Um, so yes, and finally, I will encourage you to join our Facebook page. So on the Young Engineers Australia website that was launched literally today, 11th of November, um, yea.engineersaustralia.org.au, 
um, have a look there and it will give you the links also to join our Facebook uh, page in Victoria. That's it for me to start off uh, uh, talking about Engineers Australia and um, how to make the most of a membership. Um, I guess now we can transition um, Vinod Pravinash to, I guess, a panel conversation. Yeah. It was nice and concise and you know it helped elucidate this the inner workings of engineers australia and the benefits the numerous benefits that undergraduates as well as graduates um get what with a subscription with ea so with um so ushani catherine um do, do you guys want to speak a little bit about um jv uh, cac as well as um the young ea sorry the, uh, catherine you're, you're muted you think, think i'd yeah. get the hang of this after six months <laughs> Um, so um, maybe I'll just talk a little bit about um, the JVCC and a yeah. couple of activities that we do that are really relevant to students. So whilst we have a really strong focus on CPD for chemical engineers in Victoria, there's also a couple of prizes that our committee organises and judges both of which are student prizes. So um, for anyone that has recently graduated or is in currently in fourth year, you'll know all about the design project. Um, and so the best design project um, for each of the three Victorian universities are judged and whichever university has the best one, they win what's called the Pratt Prize, which is a prize um, uh, started by um, Clive Pratt and he seeded the funding and so there's a little bit of money but then also the best um, prize from a uh, breast project from Victoria then goes into a national competition and the the winners announced at Chemica so it's quite a prestigious prize. Monash were actually the winners in 2020 but the other thing that the JVCC do is we run an event to um, celebrate the award, but the other thing that we ask is each of the, the um, top rated teams from each university to give a presentation, some of the things that they've learned about going through the design project. So it's a really great night for students that are maybe in third year or fourth year. We try and time it around the time of year where you're starting to think about, hey, I'm gonna have to get my design project done. So um, it's a really fantastic, um, chance to hear a little bit from students who have been through the process of design project um, and some of the things that they learnt from that that then you can apply to your team as well and um, this year we did we had an online event like pretty much everyone else um, and you can actually find it the recording for it on the ICME um, website if you want to go and have a look. The other thing that we do is at our end of year event, which is typically October or November, um, we announce the winners of the penultimate year student prize. Um, and what this is, is it's an opportunity for any student who's in their penultimate or second last year of chemical engineering studies to um, enter this competition. There's a winner per university. And what we ask is that you're a member of either ICME or EA, um, that you um, write an essay on the role of chemical engineering in society, and that you also tell us a little bit about yourself. And then the judging criteria, just quickly check, make sure I get it right, um, also involves um, thinking, you know, how are you contributing as um, someone to the chemical engineering profession? So we look at both your public, professional and academic um, results as part of part of that judging. It's a $500 prize, so not, you know, insubstantial, but you also get a certificate. So um, it's something that I think is a nice way for, you know, people who are coming towards the end of their engineering degree to think about, well, what contribution are they going to make to the chemical engineering profession and how can they help out in the long run? So that's a little bit about the bits that JVCC do from a student perspective. Um, I guess we also organise um, CPD events that cover a wide range of topics. So we usually have something around safety every year, sometimes around energy. And what I'd say is as a student, it's really important to think about how you're going to manage continuing professional development. While you're a student, you learn a lot about how to do very specific problems. There's a 
to look the answers up in the back of generally. Um, but in the real world, there's infinite possibilities and opportunities. And so seeing how someone else has maybe defined a problem and then how they've gone about tackling it or some of the problems that they overcame or some of the things that you might want to think about in solving a problem from a practical sense. Um, going to CPD events, whether it's specific ChemEng ones or other ones that Engineers Australia or other professional bodies organise are a really great insight into how doing stuff in the world of work actually works. And I think that you can pick up so many really great suggestions and topics. Like Omar mentioned, we also like to run site tours and they're generally very popular, but unfortunately COVID-19, like for so many other things, has basically squashed that for this year. But we hope as soon as it's safe to do so and um, people are willing to take visitors onto their site, we'll recommence them. Beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Um, Ushani, do you have anything to add? Um, so just around young engineers from Australia, as a, as a graduate um, engineer, I think one of the sessions that I found really useful and one of the webinars that I found really useful was, um, a, I'm not really sure what it's exactly named, but it, it's, it's around just getting an understanding of how as a graduate we can get started on working towards our chartered engineer mem membership sort of um, thing. So as a graduate engineer, if you, if you think about chartered engineer um, and you ask around it, they'll be like, oh, you need at least three to four years of experience. When you start getting into it and you realize there's something called um, CPD points, which um, Xavier spoke about, which is continuous yeah. professional development. And you need to acquire at least, I think, 150 hours of it or so. And as a graduate engineer, you can already start getting these points together. So that's something that I found um, really useful. So the webinars in there, even after you graduate, um, there's quite a bit of information that you can get from these little webinars that they do. So definitely very useful. Beautiful, right. That's that's great that you shared that. Yes, Xavier. To quickly add on that, what Sean said, yes, the chartered, chartered credential, the chartered status, you do have to uh, approve and maintain 150 hours of CPD. So yeah. Development. So that's to attain that level of recognition, I guess, um, being the best engineer can be a rec recognition through the chartered status. Um, but definitely what Catherine was saying, um, continuing professional development is extremely important for engineers. You always have to stay up to date with the local, whether you, whether you want to become a chartered engineer or not, uh, stay up to date with the local knowledge. Um, it's not because you got your degree at university that done, done. I've learned how to be yeah. an and you're consistently learning, not, not through experience, because once again, I don't have an engineering background, but from numerous um, testimonies, yeah, you always have to uh, constantly learn. So that's the fascinating part of, I think, the profession itself. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so just to iterate, uh, reiterate that undergraduates and, and anyone in their degree can accrue these CPD points in any point of their degree. No. Not, not necessarily. If you were comfortable, um, it's good to get the habit, take the habit yeah. as a student to um, track and take note of all the events that you attend. What was the name of the event? What did you learn? Um, just take the habit of that while you're a student, but they will not count as um, CPD hours. It's only once you've graduated. Uh, um, okay. Long right. story short, chartered is what we call a stage two. Stage two, a level of proficiency. So stage one is your undergraduate qualification. So once you've graduated from an undergraduate uh, degree, stage one. Um, that's a stage one competency. Right. Stage two, chartered. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you.